In 2000, the largest satellite constellation in history, Iridium, has only 62,000 clients instead of the 1 million needed. With a total cost of $6 billion, it is the most expensive technological project ever created. Motorola, who developed the constellation, files for bankruptcy after only nine months in business. On March 17th, the company decides to cut off service. The constellation's days are numbered. Dan Calusi, retired businessman in Palm Beach, Florida, is just playing golf and enjoying his retirement. And he sees that Motorola is going to crash these satellites. And so he decides on his own um, at the age of 69 to come out of retirement and figure out a way to save the constellation. In my previous life, I had seen uh, large corporations do pretty stupid things, and I'd been able to benefit from them. I, I just never had a doubt about its economic viability. I just had to convince others. Dan Calusi went to everybody in the world to try to get the money. He went to the 28 partners. Uh, he went to all the service providers in the world. But he formed a, a, a business partnership with uh, a group of African-American businessmen. And then later he added to that a partnership with a Saudi Arabian prince. They managed to pull together almost all the money. So that's when I began negotiating with the banks and with Motorola. Executives from Motorola show very little enthusiasm in Dan Colusi's offer to buy Iridium. After three decades of prosperity, the company's stock has dropped 50%. Now, they plan to destroy the constellation as soon as possible. They were spending money to keep the, uh, keep the satellites in orbit. There were about 200 employees that were basically keeping the satellites uh, in orbit. Uh, they were paying for it. At the time he became interested in it, uh, they told him, you have nine days. You have nine days to put together the money in the business plan and buy the satellites uh, or they're going to be crashed. And they were pushing the judge, the bankruptcy judge, to let them destroy it because it was costing them money. They threatened to deorbit several times. And then a very, very strange thing happened. Through my, through my African-American uh, partners, uh, we were able to get access to um, the White House and to Secretary Cohen. The owner of the Black Entertainment Network had a female talk show hostess who was married to the Secretary of Defense. That complicated, weird thing resulted in a meeting between Dan Calusi and the Secretary of Defense, and things started to happen in Calusi's favor that were totally by accident. Jesse Jackson was summoned, and he whispered in Al Gore's ear, was the Vice President, that this is something that should be saved because it's good for Africa, because you need no infrastructure on the ground. But at the same time, Motorola declares the company is spending $100 million a month just to stay in business. There are now official threats to deorbit, but one unexpected event is about to change the course of things. There was a major thought circulating around that if you deorbited 85 satellites in a short period of time, that at least one or two had come crashing through the Earth's atmosphere and it would be a disaster. This was a uh, ridiculous analysis because the insurance companies that really get into this had done their own calculations and it was less than a million in one chance. But nevertheless, it was uh, rampant, it was in the press. Clinton asked the question when he heard this, well, is this real? And they said, well, Mr. President, it's very unlikely, but it could happen, okay? So <laughs> his reaction to that was, this thing's not being deorbited on my watch. The system was actually 12 hours away from being destroyed. At the very last minute, there was a meeting in the Pentagon, and a particular deputy secretary intervened. If I hear one more f***ing time that you're going to deorbit these satellites, uh, you tell your CEO, Motorola's going to be in a lot of trouble in the Pentagon, OK? Will you tell him that personally for me? 
Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Well, that was the last mention of Dior. <laughs> we never heard Motorola threaten to Dior, but after that. Dan Colusi wins a $72 million contract to provide unlimited phone services for the Department of Defense. He is finally able to close a deal on December 20th, 2000. Now he owns Iridium. But now the investors want their money back, quickly. Emerging from bankruptcy and the near destruction, they were planning to de destroy those satellites, uh, send them spinning off into the Earth's atmosphere. Iridium is now relaunching its satellite mobile phone uh, service. The system goes live today, almost exactly a year after the commercial service was turned off. The new owners paid just $25 million to acquire the system, which originally cost Motorola and other investors more than $5 billion to develop. Joining us to talk about the relaunch and whether they can make it work this time is the new chairman and CEO of Iridium, Dan Colusi, joining us today from Boynton Beach, Florida. And I see you. Thank you for joining us. I know. Now, you say you only need 60,000 customers to break even. The old Iridium needed a few million. Uh, One million. We have uh, 20,000 uh, users already with the Department of Defense. Okay. And we have at least 22,000 phones that are already out there. Now, we're already shipping new phones. We're uh, uh, optimistic that we're going to be able to make our goals of 60,000 break even within the first year. Who's the real user? Obviously, it's not the international business traveler. And the answer was, it's anybody who's working in a part of the world where there is no phone service, where the Iridium phone is the only phone. There's a good chance that without that technology, I wouldn't be here today. And then it's also people that need to track assets in the remote parts of the world. So a lot of the business of Iridium is not even used as a phone. It's a device that sends information back to another device. The, the things that made Iridium famous, finally, were 9-11, uh, because it was the only phone that worked uh, in New York City on 9-11. Um, Hurricane Katrina, because the entire communications infrastructure of southern Louisiana was knocked out, and um, uh, the war in Afghanistan. There were places where no communications device worked except the Iridium phone. Okay, Dad, uh, I'm gonna jump on the bus. I'll be there. Are you okay? The Iridium satellites had a life expectancy of five years, but they are still delivering the same services 10 years later. In 2007, Dan Colusi announces his plan to start deployment of the new Iridium Next constellation. No one believes it is possible. There were a lot of people in the company who didn't believe we could do a second generation. So we started interviewing CEOs and, and the criteria was, after you study this, do you believe you could take this to the next generation? And I've already mentioned that Matt studied it and came back. I said, Matt, it's a key thing. He came back and said, um, I've just drank the Kool-Aid. I think we can do this. You're the man. Some of the things on the Iridium Next project uh, required invention in many ways. It required creativity. It required people to look out further than they've ever looked before in terms of managing a project of this scope and scale. So a build and place satellite may take up to two years, or on the Iridium Next, we're able to build a satellite start to finish in less than 50 days. And we had to move very fast. 